Hi guys, uh, since we published number one video, which was uh, yesterday, I've been doing a bit more trialling with this chuck and I've been fighting with uh, an issue of non-repeatability. Uh, my original thoughts were that um, one or more of the jaws may be um, higher at the back than in the front and uh, that was causing um, the run out when I measured the um, position of the bar six inches out. And I did some uh, trials last night uh, uh, off camera um, by uh, swapping two jaws and then putting those back and swapping the other two, trying to determine <coughs> if um, uh, one or more of the jaws uh, was different from the others. Uh, the issue I had was that I wasn't getting the result that I was expecting. The results were not terribly repeatable. So, thinking about it last night, um, I had a what I call a brainwave I suppose, why not check the jaws two at a time? Uh, that way um, I, I would be able to um, uh, use one, one jaw as a reference and, um, uh, and swap the one opposite with the, other, with the other three and that way it would give me a, um, a comparison of number one with number two, three and four and then number two with three and four and number three with number four etc. Um, so I did that and I'll show you the result which is not what I was hoping and probably not what you would expect so let's, let's get this um, bar roughly, uh, roughly centred So we're within about three thousandths here, which is good enough for the experiment that I'm about to do. Yeah, we're within three thousand. Right, so I'll bring the camera in a bit so you can see what's what's happening. We are within three thousandths of being online. All the jaws are quite snug. So let's loosen two of them. So I'll loosen number one and number three. Now, if the jaws are par if the jaw faces are parallel, and the uh, and the face of the jaw has got a very slight curve in it, so it's they're not flat. They're um, uh, they're uh, concave. Uh, but if they are parallel and gripping the bar over their entire length, I should not be able to move the um, move the bar, and I can quite easily. And what that tells me is that those two jaws, are, well, one of them at least is bell mouth. Probably both of them. So that's number uh, number two and four. So I'll put one and three back in place. Well. Check our, uh, that's amazing, <laughs> it's, it's within two thousandths. Right, within three thousandths now. Right, so now we'll take the other pair of jaws out. So I'll loosen off one and three before, I'll loosen off number two and number four. And same issue. So what that's telling me is that all of the jaws are, are bell mouth, well at least uh, opposite pairs anyway, and they're, they're um, clamping on the bar right at the back of the jaw and they're all and they're loose at the front. So no wonder I was getting um, non-repeatable results. What was happening was I uh, get the bar in place um, and uh, get it running dead true here, measure the run out five inches out from the chuck, swap the bar end from end or swap a jaw, do it again and I'd get a slightly different result. So I'd put it back to where I came from, um, back to square one and I'd still have a slightly different result. Uh, and it, it ended up 
that um, the sequence in which I tightened the jaws and how hard I clamped the jaws up was affecting the run out out here at five inches from the from the face of the chuck and of course uh, sorry five inches from the face of the jaws and that of course should not have been the case if the jaws were all parallel so now I'm faced with um, grinding the jaws which is not a big job I've done that before on another on a three jaw chuck um, but the thing that I've got to consider is how do I load um, load the jaws? I mean, I could put a ring around the outside and bring the jaws out to the ring. Uh, because it's a four jaw chuck, I can grind them one at a time, uh, which makes it a, a bit easier. But I need to load the jaws, and do I load them inwards or do I load them outwards? Because there is a slight twisting action in the jaws. Um, actually, no, I've got to load them inwards because that's the that's the only only direction in which these um, faces are used. So yes, I've got to load the jaws inwards, and and that's going to be a bit tricky because I need to hold the I need to load the jaws in the inwards direction and also get out all of the face. Now what I have, um, what I did once with a with a three jaw chuck, um, I can't remember where I read about it is uh, that with the tall post grinder and the chuck unloaded you reach in and you grind away um, a very very small part of the last uh, at the end of the jaw here so you would grind away two or three millimeters of the back of the jaw um, for a depth of about a millimeter so you can put a washer in there and then you fit a washer in the back of the back of uh, the jaws um, and that, load, that allows you to load the jaws up in the right direction and then you grind up to the washer with the tall post grinder. Um, I don't like that too much because I don't really want to sacrifice um, the, back of the, uh, the back of the jaw. It just seems the wrong thing to do. Uh, another method that I did use once many years ago with a three jaw chuck was to make up um, some make up uh, some equally uh, equal length spaces like that <clears throat> just put some light on the matter for you um, so a spacer in that position there just a short spacer obviously they've got, all got to be identical but if one's got a milling machine and a surface grinder that's not a problem um, and that spacer sits in there between all four of the jaws in this particular case and that allows you to load the jaws in the inwards direction and then you can grind them. Um, alternatively, I could arrange the spacer such, such that one jaw is slightly is further in than the other two and grind one jaw at a time. Uh, I'll need to think about that. But uh, that's probably the method that I will investigate. Just making up a, uh, a spacer that sits in there. Uh, between two opposing jaws and then reach in and uh, grind them one at a time or three at a time if they were uh, all equal they want, they're not going to be equal so one at a time is probably the way to go <coughs> I'll think about that um, I need to borrow a, uh, a tall post grinder from a friend cover the lathe up of course so I don't get grinding dust everywhere and uh, we'll equalise the jaws and then we'll come back to uh, where we were yesterday. Thanks for watching.